There we go. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, good middle of the night, whenever you're listening to this podcast. Welcome to the Lawson Brothers Podcast. since the last time we recorded i did yeah. i did i lost my hair and i got new glasses too new glasses hey. I, I really like them i can see so much clearer did, did your now. prescription change prescription increased a little bit okay uh meaning i guess my eyes got worse is what that means <laughs> uh but this was good news my um my eye doctor said and i think i've told a couple people this story but my eye doctor said sam uh your your eye doctor when you were a child must have done a lot of good patchwork because most people with your script lose <laughs> their eye. I have astigmatism in my left eye. Not lose their eye, like lose their vision. Lose their, their vision, right, right, which right, is right. essentially losing your eye. Well, I mean, it's still in there. It's um, not useful. You're not like losing it as in like I lost my wallet a right. couple weeks ago, but um, <laughs> this is like, no, you lose where was your, your vision. Wallet? When you lost your wallet, where was it? <laughs> tell, them where it tell them where it was. I spent with some other people where I had a lot of great help. Shout out Rebecca, thank you for your help. Uh and and other and people and James and Thank you. Yeah. Uh, y'all You showed up my house them. twice accusing me of having your wallet at my house. I lost my what wallet for about seventy two hours and I uh, was encouraged to, to check the very place where it was <laughs> the last time I had it, which uh, what was my front pants pocket. And so and that's exactly I walked into uh, where it was. It was. I walked into my closet <laughs> like it was probably nine o'clock. I looked all day long at well, subconsciously looking all day long. I tried to have a great day at, at the uh, Flower Town Festival with some amazing people, and uh, yeah, got got home that night and was was encouraged to check the very first place that that it could have been. And I walked into my closet, turned the lights on, and uh, there it was in a nicely folded pair of blue jean pants. Right uh, where you left it. Just, Braden, just, that's just slightly a, hanging out of my pocket. The yeah. advice there that I gave Sam was, Sam, this is what I tell every middle schooler who loses their cell phone or something else on a retreat. Go check your room. <laughs> and, their, and their response is always, I did. And my response is always, go check again. Dude, I, I and look, normally, normally, more often than not, they come back and I, <laughs> I found Dude, it. I look <laughs> right where I left I it. I searched my apartment <laughs> up and down up and down except for the closet probably three or four times i looked in my truck i was i you like stressed out I, huh you stressed out i was i was a little <laughs> bit i i really was usually usually like there's this thing that happens when i lose stuff that i'll just show up to my normal routine or whatever and do my normal activities and it'll just be like floating in the air or something like yeah, that like right, right in front, front of my face. face or sitting on like my truck seat or something <laughs> where am like, oh Hey, you'd have, found you it, you'd have found it the next time you wore those pants. The next time I wore the pants, that would have been crazy. I'd have right. been, I'd been a, little, a little more stressed out. Probably would have, I would have bought like a new license and all Cancel new cards. cards and, 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 yeah, goodness. But mm. it was weird. It was weird. Does anybody else lose stuff? Do you ever lose stuff, James? Um, yeah. What do you lose? My keys. Your keys? I, I'm, I'm really bad about leaving my keys One places. The, um, and in fact, I don't know if I ever told you this or not. One of the first, I just, shortly after we moved to Somerville, yeah. um, <laughs> I left my keys in Tara's purse. Um, and, and she went to work at the hospital oh, in the no. morning. This was probably maybe, maybe two weeks after we'd been here. I hadn't been here long at all. Um, it was freezing cold, <laughs> January morning. And um, it's, it was actually, it was Noah's first day of preschool at the church. Uh -huh. So I go to get my keys. We're living at the time in this little, like, 500 square foot. Um, I, I'm not, you can't even call it an apartment. It's a 500 square foot, like, cottage. Converted, Would you say cottage? Uh, yeah, it's a converted garage, essentially, that, mm. you know, the cottage, if okay. you want to call it that. It had a kitchen and living room that was, just, you know, the size of a bedroom and then, like, a tiny little bedroom out on the back. And um, so anyway, that's where we were living that month. And I uh, go to get out you know my stuff and getting the get in the car to take no to preschool no keys no keys. can't find them anywhere and, and there's only 500 square feet like it's not like there's a lot of space <laughs> for them to be lost in and i realized they're in tara's purse well she's at work she can't come back so mm. um first day of preschool for noah uh he and i end up walking to church um in about 25 degree weather i remember that remember actually that? i remember hearing that 
you walked your son. I did to walked, the church. Walked him to his first day of preschool. We were far away. Far what away. A, we, were, we were not far. What away. a power move by a father walking his son. I don't know what else was I gonna do. I don't know, dude. I had to go to work. Nothing. You know, That's the only preschool. solution. I'm just glad, like Noah actually went with you though. What, he's one. Where else he was he do? one? Yeah. He was one. Yeah, what else are we gonna do? Oh wow, never mind. I thought he was older than that. Picked him up, bag on the other shoulder, diaper bag on the back. I guess I'm just you know, imagining we trucking down the street. I guess I'm in my mind. I was picturing him walking beside you. No, no, no but no, you were carrying. No. Him. I was, no, I was carrying him, my stuff, his mm. stuff. That'll it, preach too. It was cold. It was cold. Your father carrying you. Hey, great podcast content. That's a good illustration there. There you so, go. I'll use that one day. You should. So you should. Well, hey, we're gonna spend today uh, just kind of catching up a little bit. Anyway, we've been pretty busy the last few weeks here with uh, what's been happening, all, all kind of stuff. So, well, um, let's see. Since since we've recorded last time, we've we've had Easter Sunday. Uh, we are the boys had spring break, and that included a little little family trip there. Yep. Um, I went to a conference. You went to a to a John Mayer concert. Yeah, uh, several weeks ago. A lot of yeah. A lot of a lot of things have been happening in the last few weeks. So um, we we talked a little bit this past Sunday about the idea of shared human experience. Mm-hmm. Well, music is definitely a shared human experience that you know you can you can hear a song that's from a different culture and a different language and find yourself just you know tapping along to the beat or it just impacts you. I remember being in Israel a couple of years ago, and as we were leaving the the Wailing Wall. Um, we were walking out like around towards the temple steps at the, the, the old city of Jerusalem and we passed a, a bar mitzvah. Uh, celebration happening. Hmm. And, I mean, it was a like it was a big deal. There's, a, there's like a, a band accompanying the the celebration. Like the whole family's parading, you know, to celebrate this young Jewish man coming of age. And um, like it was it was fu- it was funny watching our watching our group uh, just kind of like bob along to the to the music. Like I didn't yeah. understand a word, you know, they were singing or saying. It was all it was all in all in Hebrew. And um, yet there, you know, it's the power of music. Like we felt like we were celebrating in the the middle of this bar mitzvah and that's the power of music you know? yeah oh and you think about you think about the 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 thing that makes human life go hmm. which is the heartbeat mm. the heartbeat's a rhythmic thing dude mm. music is okay. like i mean it is it is in us in us and and music's in us we're we 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 go to the doctor when we fall out of time yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying. That's a great point. I mean, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, no, I love so that. So it's just an interesting. That. Like we're wired to connect with rhythms, and we're wired to respond to it. And like when music happens, that that's that that's pleasing to the ear. That's not dissonant. People react to it and respond. And music provokes emotion and blood pressure when it increases. The rhythm of the heart increases, and so you. You pulse you feel and it. You, you feel, feel it, it. Yeah. and when it slows yeah. down, you're you're like so. All right, so there, it's, there, it's there, interesting. There was a I know you're not on social media, but there there was a social media controversy lately um, on on Twitter, especially. There's okay. always controversial. On Twitter. Right. That's part of that's partly why I like Twitter. To be honest okay. with you, um, I just like seeing what people are arguing about. But um, this this controversy was about the use of music in worship to evoke emotion. Yeah. And there were people arguing that all worship music is manipulative. And I was like, do people not understand what music, like all music evokes emotion, right. you know, like yeah. it's like, and, and that's, and like, that's from God, you know, like, yeah. I mean, how do we, how do we get through the moments of pain in life? Well, we, we worship through the pain and, and it, it reorients our heart and our soul toward God. And I'm like, you know, trying to manipulate anybody. We're trying to, if we're trying to manipulate anything, we're trying to manipulate our own hearts, our own souls, and direct our own hearts and affections toward God. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I, if somebody, what asks, are your thoughts on that as a worship if, worship guy? If you're asking me, like, I would definitely. I'm not going to be the one to to argue against the fact that I I don't play music to compliment what's happening because mm-hmm. I, I do I mm-hmm. do that's like that's um that's that's the approach that I I think through not manipulating somebody for the sake of manipulation but I mean the reason why we play music the reason why we think about these songs and why say specifically you're probably talking about like the music that that might be coming in at the the end of the message. Oh no, I'm, I'm just like I know, like this. Just in the, this whole controversy on Twitter was like worship music in general. Oh, just like, like the idea of like singing worship music is manipulative. Oh, I think I think it's just garbage. <laughs> 
I really think it's garbage. <laughs> I love it. I do. I love it. I, no, I agree. I'm brutally honest. Like, Come on, I that's, think that's, it's garbage. That's ridiculous. I think the people that that might be saying that, um, I would I would be interested to know where their their heart is. And I would be interested to know if those people are probably calling out pastors for preaching the gospel, sure. um, et cetera. That's, I don't yeah. want to get into that yeah. and, and have a big target on my back. Yeah. But there are a lot of people who are, are just being critical for the sake of being critical. Sure. Sure. Um, and I also think musically, like what I see my role in, in serving the church mm. is to offer people a really... Um, a really uh, clear doorway to walk through that that opens up their perspective a little bit more to who Jesus is and what he's done yeah. for yeah. us. And the way that you do that is not by playing something that people hate. Yeah. I mean, you no. want to, <laughs> I want to, no. I want to be the best. Mu- Honestly, I want, and I have no shame in saying this. I want to be the best musician Absolutely. that I can possibly be. I want to raise the standard for what Absolutely. I do. I want to know everything about music that I can. Why? Because God's given me a gift to steward. And yeah. if I limit the ability to be used by God because I'm not working hard, then I'm yeah. not stewarding that that's, gift I exactly that, how I need to. And that's a that's a great that's a great principle there. I can just, just pull that out that, you know, if God has given someone a gift, if God's given you a gift, if God's given you listening something that that you're good at don't don't diminish your gift in the name of humility. Yeah. And, and and that sounds weird, but what I mean by that is go be excellent for the glory of God. You know, if you're if you're good at something, don't hide what you're good at and you know, because of you're afraid of what people might say, like, no, go go be the best you can be at what you do. And then when somebody gives you credit just send that credit on to god yeah you know I, and i i think that's yeah if you think back man like through the ages the church the church has been the heartbeat of the best art the best music the best creativity and and somewhere along the way somewhere along the way we 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 lost sight of that um, but man, we, I, Herb McManus wrote a book called The Artisan Soul, um, yeah. and, and his big line in that book was everybody, every single human being is both a, a work of art and a work in progress. Um, and, and the point was that, hey, we're a work of art. We're God's masterpiece. That's Ephesians 2.10. We're a work in progress. We're clay being fashioned into the image of Christ in the earth. But part of that, that work of art mantra that's on our lives is that we are created to create, like we're designed by creator God with the ability to create a better world and create beautiful things, whether you're a teacher or an artist or a lawyer, doctor, whether you're building, you know, building a business or building your home, you know, as a mom, a dad, whatever, like whatever your hand finds to do, scripture says, do it as unto the Lord, you know, and, yeah. and that that's not a low bar. That's a really, really high bar. It's a high bar. And, and I was, and I'm curious to know what you think about this, but this might just be more of a personal thought that I've had is like, mm. for some reason, people who are Christians who, who have talents, they, they run and they, they're afraid of like being good at what they do. You know what I mean? Like there, it's almost like a, Oh, I can't work hard because I don't want to be good because if I'm good, people will see me as good. But like there, there's some like, there's, some lie or something that at some point in time that that's coming in, like I'm afraid to be good at what I'm doing because I think that, you know, I might become too prideful, which is a good fear, but yeah. it's like, uh, and, that, and that's, that's, that's a conversation worth like having, you know, I think that's a, that's a perspective worth acknowledging that, that yeah, that, I mean, success, the, the, the threat of success is always that we would internalize that success and begin to think that that we did it or it was our ability our gift that enabled us to be successful yeah rather than realizing that hey you know all that we are and all that we have and all that we can do ultimately is a a gift from almighty god right. and you know when you go into it with that perspective that hey if anything good comes of this god gets the credit god deserves the glory from it um but that's that 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 changes how we approach things you know i think we 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 then realize that no i i can work hard i should work hard god 
God is worthy of my hard work. And, you know, if, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. I, you and I both have a, have a really, really high bar for excellence. Um, and I don't know, it, it I, quite honestly, it, it bothers me when people, when people don't put a hundred percent into what they're doing. Um, and whatever that is, you know, it's like, Hey, if it's worth doing and like, we don't have that much time on this planet, you know? So if you're going to do it, do it. Don't, don't halfway do it. Right. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Right. Um, coach White uh, used to always say practice doesn't make perfect practice makes permanent. Mm. Um, and so what you do and how you do it, uh, you know, if, if you just think that like halfway doing something, over, it's going to get you where you want to go. It's just going to, it's just, it's going to anchor that halfway mentality in your mind. So if you're going to do it, that's something right, I do it right. Something I, I tell myself is Sam, do not insult the giver of your gift by not stewarding your gift. Don't insult the giver. It's good. You know, it's good. He's giving it. Don't insult it by not stewarding that's it. Good. Be a steward, work hard. Mm. And then like, if you're, Maybe, I don't know, I've always struggled with like, well, I don't think as much recently, but there was a long period of time where I was trying to figure out kind of the direction and God's will and had this idea of God's will being like this present on a mountain that I would hike to (laughs) and and discover it and open it up and be like, oh, there's God's (laughs) will for my life. This is the direction. This is how it's going to look. This reality that I'm going to step into. But like, if you're like me at one point in time wondering what to do or you're like, what even is my gift? Because it's a podcast and we're trying to be helpful. Maybe a a thought process is what, what are you doing right now that God's already using? Hmm. And what do you enjoy about that? What What do you you, like? What do you, what do you, what do you like? What are you good at? Um, You know, what, what is it that, that you do that adds value to the world? And, you know, um, I mean, sometimes, sometimes uh, I think we, we feel like we don't have anything you know, maybe, or, or you're like, I don't know, I don't know what that is, or I'm just a whatever. I think that's some, sometimes, sometimes that's the, the thing we fall into. It's like, oh, I, I don't have, you know, I can't play music, or I can't write, or I can't, um, I can't speak in public, or I can't, you know, I don't have a lot of money to be incredibly generous, but not like, what, what, what has God put in your hand? You know, whether it's raising kids or a friend who you can speak life into or um, I mean, we all have, you know, we all have a cell phone in our hands that we can send text messages with and we yeah. can post things on the Internet. Like we, we, we have a lot more to steward than we think. And um, I think sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, sitting down and going, hey, you know, rather than lamenting all the things that I don't have or that I can't do, what can I do with what's in my hand today for the glory of God? Yeah, yeah, that's good. dude. So, what else is new? What else is new? Um, Easter. Let's talk about Easter for a minute. Sure. You talk about Easter. Let's, I, let's, let's I was go actually, behind the scenes a little bit on Easter Sunday. Re, I was actually going to say, well, no, no, go, no, no, no. Say it. go ahead. I was going to say, following up the music conversation, we could totally just get into the fact that we like listen to all our favorite throwbacks for several hours other day. <laughs> we did. We did. After so after Easter Sunday, we took off to the upstate to yeah. see family. <laughs> um we actually made a couple of trips uh over the the spring break week. We we left on Easter Sunday and went and had We were in the car a lot. We were in the car a lot. Um <laughs> and then came back to Somerville. Um uh, we had both of us needed to work and Tara had some stuff she had to knock out for a couple of days and uh had a flat tire and uh, that was all that was kind of changed the tire in the dark and my uh, headlight my truck's been out for like three then, weeks yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I need to get that um, fixed. So where do I go? Where do I go? Where do you go, listeners? What's your recommendation? I need some auto zone, man. Is that the place? Not, it's not hard. Just, hey, I got, got an old truck up there. And just tell them. Need a headlight. Tell them. I'm kidding. I'm just being dumb. <laughs> I'm just being funny. Then call dad. Dad will tell you how to do it. No, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I ain't calling him. Um, but boy. But yeah, they, but so anyway, then. Um, like I told you to be a man the, when towards, you go down there. Towards the end of spring break week. Um, um, my brother-in-law and I went to a conference. We can talk about that later, maybe. And sure. um, while we went to the conference, you and mom and dad and Emily, our sister, and yep. Lawson, our nephew, and then Tara and our two boys, um, you all went and did like the tour of Atlanta. Um, it was so, something. So anyway, y'all, y'all went to the aquarium and Lego. Went to the land aquarium, went to Le- and Lego Land. We ate at uh, Johnny Rockets <laughs> for some healthy dinner. There you go. There you go. Before going so, yeah, to that, Lego that, Land, that's an Atlanta experience. It man. was fun, dude. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. Yeah, a good time. Uh, Lego Land was uh, Lego Land was intense. I've never been to Disney World, but I imagine that Lego Land was like a 
glimpse of what like the just the world transformation feel yeah, yeah, is yeah. like it was Disney. hilarious hearing different the different perspectives on legoland because noah like that was his favorite thing and yeah. judah judah's statement was there were wegos everywhere yeah, there were like, he loved it <laughs> um tara was like it wasn't that great and then dad was like it was awesome dad loved it uh <laughs> it was my favorite thing about Legoland, dude, the the virtual reality like roller coaster or re- not roller dude, those coaster. Those things make my head hurt. I thought I was about to puke <laughs> everywhere in the yeah. room. Uh, like I this thing's like shaking my stomach <laughs> around. And the older it's I've the, gotten, it's the 4D stuff, man. It's like the goggles, and it's like my eyes and hurt, and my head hurts, and I get off, and it's like I don't feel <laughs> I thought, well. I the don't graphics feel were <laughs> the graphics were incredibly disappointing. Yeah. I was like, why do you want to? put on these goggles to look around in a world that looks way worse than like playing your Xbox One. So when we went to like, this is we not went, good. We went to Disney and like that's all like the, a lot of the new rides at Disney are kind of that. Really? Um I don't want to go then. No, that's, it's awesome. But that's the thing like you know, I haven't been to Legoland but like when Disney does something Disney does it right. But like okay. you know it, it like it makes you feel like you're moving but you're actually just like you know you're riding a, a banshee in the Avatar ride or whatever. Nice. And, um but I think the the worst one there's uh, at Hollywood Studios. There's a ride called Smuggler's Run. Okay. Um, what is it, that? It was the first Star Wars ride at Disney. Oh. And so you're like in this like cargo ship, and man, it is. It's it's a it's a fun ride. Yeah. Like about halfway through, every time I ride it, I just start sweating <laughs> because it's like there's so many things moving and flashing, and you're shaking, and it's like. I don't feel good, and Dude. I don't know why I got back on this because I knew this was going to happen, <laughs> and I don't feel well. Bro, I've seen you vomit in some don't disgusting ways before. <laughs> you have a, you have oh, such a bad man. stomach. I do. You have I do. such a bad it's stomach. Got, it's gotten worse. Like, as I've got, I got, growing up, man, I used to love roller coasters, I just, and I still, I still Dude, like them. You used to puke all the time but, off of well, roller coasters. I, but, but there's you still so, love, I love them. them. <laughs> I love them. And that's my problem because it's like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. I don't feel great, but I think I can make it through this one. And then sometimes it just doesn't it just doesn't work out for me. I remember <laughs> I remember we were at Carolyn's. What, with a, with tell a, me. With a youth group. With the youth we group. With, youth group. With Sakona. Uh-huh. And it was summertime, right? Summertime. And you. July. You had rode. We had all re- just gotten off we, we this. We got uh, there. Well, well, the Backstory: We got there about midday. Yeah. All right. So the first thing we were gonna do was. You eat. gotta let me tell the part. We, I will. We, we were gonna eat lunch. Okay. We we're gonna eat lunch. <laughs> and one of our sweet little boys had forgotten his lunch. <laughs> okay. Did so you give him your lunch? I gave him my lunch. <laughs> what a good Elijah guy. Elijah Turner. Uh, Elijah, Elijah Turner. Nice. Um, Elijah, man, if you ever listen to this, we love you. And I will never forgive you for this day (laughs) because I gave him my peanut butter sandwich and like half of my banana. And so I ended up eating like we've been eating we've been eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches and (laughs) bananas our whole entire life. I bring that for lunch Uh, here. So so I gave I gave Elijah my lunch. Now go ahead. Yeah, you gave him. I guess you gave him lunch. I actually didn't didn't remember that, but I just remembered we. So I went into Carowinds on an empty stomach. You went in on an empty (laughs) stomach. Bad idea. Anyway, I got a story in a second too about going to the Simpsonville Fair. This last summer, I don't go to by myself. Um, but uh, I don't ride. I don't ride any sort of ride that people can set up and take down. Dude, I'm not getting on it. This was my last <laughs> fair that I will ever go to this last fun. summer. All right, go ahead. But uh, tell the, tell the it was fun time. Happy birthday, Carson Strong. That was that was your birthday Carson. celebration this last time. You you know Carson. Carson, good good guy, real good guy. Good guy. Oh, uh, <laughs> what's what's the ride? It's it's the one where you you do a flip. You go and you back yeah, up. Yeah, it like shoots you out. You do a like an upside down loop de loop, and you go to the top, and then you go backwards. Yeah, yeah. You just and go, you go back backwards. and forth, kind of on that little yeah. loop de loop curly <laughs> cue for a couple oh, of times. I remember we got hey. off of it, and we're <laughs> you're probably getting sick just thinking about. Mm. It. We got off of it, and uh, Tara, you and Tara had been together for like 25 years at that point in time. <laughs> and uh, were, were we married then? Um. You no, might, we were not. No, no, y'all this, this was, I was in college. Yeah, you were this in college. Because, uh, because, because Mark Canarney was leading this trip. Was Mark there? He was the youth guy Mark at, was, at Sakona. I was the summer and intern. And I would have been like middle you school. You were probably middle school. Seventh grade. Eli- yeah, you and Elijah both were middle school. Well. Seventh, eighth grade, ninth yeah, grade. Yeah, because you, gra- I, so you graduated high I was school. 20. I was in, probably 20. Okay, so this probably, probably, so you, this you probably were, I might have been seventh. You were 13. 
about seventh about or eighth be, grade or something. Grade, about, about to be in eighth, eighth grade. Ninth grade okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, I did vividly. I mean, I am watching this happen in my mind right now. <laughs> I'm like on your left, and the group is is there, and it's oh, not a huge man. group of people that were there. But you're walking, and there's like a rail, and then like some trees between mm. between you and like the, the like future vomit day. destination. I, and so uh, <laughs> you're like walking up the rail, and you're like Tara. Tara, I'm gonna be sick. Tara, she's Tara, like, Tara. She's like, and no, she's, you're like, not. she's like, she's like, no, James, not. no, you're, no not. you're not. You're gonna be fine. Just keep breathing. Just keep walking. And Tara's great in moments of crisis like yeah. that with health stuff. Uh, but she's not. She has no sympathy for for me. Which is she, why she's, she's a good. great nurse. Yeah. She has no. She has no sympathy for me. <laughs> she will. Nope. Laugh, she will laugh at me in a heartbeat. Because when you say you're about to throw up. Everybody knows that it's coming. <laughs> Everybody knows that it's coming, and it's so, going to be and, gross and, and, and disgusting. But, but, and you but, said, but, but, here, but here was the problem. What I knew, like I was walking <laughs> off the ride. There's, and I knew, like there were a group of people behind yeah. me. We had a bunch of youth in front of us. Like, I couldn't stop and be sick. I couldn't make. I was, I was not going to make it to the bathroom. So like, as I'm walking, I just turn whoa, 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 to the right. Whoa, 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 you're going to ruin it. Just, um, go ahead. You said finish the story. You said finish like three story. or four more Let's times. Move on Tara, this. Tara. Tara and she's like, I don't think, I think you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. I'm not I don't exaggerate Tell story. anything. Tell the story. I don't exaggerate anything. That's <laughs> yeah, right. the biggest lie I've ever told. <laughs> uh, but Tara's like, you're fine, James. Just keep breathing. You're like, Tara, Tara, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Here it comes. And you, you turn your head, and I just remember your your chest is forward, but your head is completely sideways. I just kept walking. Like, you kept walking, <laughs> and you turn your head, and projectile vomit is parallel to the ground. <laughs> and it, for you probably threw up like 10 feet away from you. It's like, <laughs> <That's gross. laughs> uh, to me, sound effects. I, I did. I hope I did. nobody's <laughs> drinking coffee right now or eating food and just vomiting. But that was my goal. I was like, I can't like sound. stop for this. I don't want to like, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, I'll be fine. It's like, I just, I just need to Dude. take care of this and just keep on walking. And it's so just I did. Like, <laughs> That's nasty. Awful. Stop. It was so bad. Stop making those noises. It's gross. <laughs> Somebody's laughing and enjoying mm. the story. This is this is true. True story. It this happened. is a true and, and, story. And that was that's a pretty accurate telling. I mean, I, some of the details may be exaggerated, but no, I got no. I got off the ride. It was accurate. Like, Terrible. <laughs> and she was like, "No, you're not." And I was sick. And you look like a ghost the rest of the <laughs> day. <laughs> no, I, I got something to eat and I was fine. Huh? I take some risk in life, you know. Whether it's riding yeah. a roller coaster, going on a solo music tour, or just taking hey, a there's risk. A, there's to, a there's a create, saying. There's a saying. Great. And what you do? Well, what, yeah, you're being saying? serious right now. This is about to be funny. There's a risk. There's a uh, quote that says, "Risk it for the biscuit." Unless you're James, and you might throw it up. Risk it for the biscuit. You ever heard "risk it for the biscuit"? I heard that, but I don't think the rest of us. I just not, say "risk it for the biscuit." Unless you throw it up, it's not a saying. I just made up the last little part of it. Um, All right, so I want I want to talk just for a second about Easter Sunday. Oh about yeah, behind, behind the, the scenes. scenes. Yeah, go for it. Um, the dude, the opener on Easter Sunday was phenomenal. Well, thanks, man. Um, nice. tell us a little, tell us a little about that. The song "Blown Away." Um, yeah, I didn't write it and just learned it and and, and tried to do, to to play it. Um, it's a powerful song. Uh, Appreciate Let me just say, if you haven't, if you, you know, if you didn't hear that live, uh, go to the, the Pinewood recording of Easter Sunday and watch the first couple of minutes of the service. Um, basically, the, the opener was the song Blown Away. It's uh, who, Hillsong United. Matt, yeah, Maddie yeah, Crocker, Matt Crocker and Joel, and Joel Houston, Houston wrote the song. And yeah. uh, they recorded it like with just an electric guitar. Um, and so... We were talking a long time, you know, a couple, a few months ago, and like, hey, how do we want to open Easter Sunday? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about the song in just a second, but like that, that song was the clear, the clear answer. And so you led yeah, you that asked me song to do it. with with just you know you and an electric guitar on mm -hmm. East on Easter, man. It was it was awesome. Well, so, thanks, man. Um, how'd you make it through that? How'd I make it through yeah, it? Yeah, I, I've been listening to the song for for months, and the first little bit of working with it and hearing it um it, it's very difficult to yeah. to make it through the whole entire song because yeah. it really it really just tells the story from a very i mean it's a brutally honest song it tells it's the story of the cross it's the story of the cross yeah absolutely and and it, it lands with a very a per, very personal idea um of of just being blown away that that jesus would do it all again yeah that he went to that length of the nails in his hands and mm. the thorns, you know, the, the crown of thorns in his brow. And yeah. His body pierced and broken. And his, his, arm his arms stretched arm wide stretched as he welcomed wide. those Roman nails. Man. Like, and then it, it, there's so many lyrics in there that just, 
powerful. And then Joel and those guys, they brought in um, a, a crazy line at the end lyrically. said, so, oh, Aloya, Loyola, my Sabathani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, just a, yeah, just a, I mean, good grief. People don't, people don't write like that. So thank you, Joel, and thank you, yeah, Maddie, for powerful, powerful. I'm being I used pull, pulling the lyrics but, uh, up right now. How did I make it? Th- I don't know, man. I've, um, any, any time, and this is, I guess this is a, ser- can I be serious with this answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, th- I think as having the role of, of a, you know, where I'm a church musician, people call me a worship leader, people call me a worship, some people say a worship pastor, I don't really have that title, I don't claim that title necessarily by any means. Um, but, you pastor people though, uh, you pastor well, people. You have people that you, you just try to people. love people. Thanks. You pastor people. Thanks. And, um, You're welcome. I think, I think one of the most powerful things that, that I can do as a guy who has the position that I do in the in a church, right? Mm-hmm. The most powerful thing I think that I can do before leading worship on a Sunday morning and inviting people into that with me is I have to have a personal moment with mm. with these songs Absolutely in right. private yeah. prior to yeah. um, prior to that That's Sunday good. morning time and and really I mean I think I think it's just, I think it makes a world of the difference in in delivery mm. and being convincing in and telling people not not being convincing is in like we're putting on a facade and trying to but you're convinced to match, but of I, the truth of what you're singing i've got to be that's what you know, i've got to be convinced of that to yeah. our youth bands right um you know you want to take the journey take it you know don't don't let don't let the when you lead the song on sunday morning or you know wednesday night be the first time that you're thinking through the lyrics and you know but like take that journey of worship yourself with the lyrics with the music so that when you step up to to lead it yeah like you're in the moment i i was on a uh retreat in college and uh leading worship um with some of my my best friends um thank you ryan stanley and dawn kelly for 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 this night honestly after after we had finished leading worship we had played our sets for that night and we were going to the place where we were staying and uh had a, had a I mean had a very serious conversation with Ryan and Dalton and and both of them, um, both of them for a long time and and still in in many ways are, are people that I've always just kind of kind of looked to as examples and sure. I, I'm so thankful for their consistency over the years yeah. and, and yeah. their willingness to good pour guys. into me. They're just Absolutely. good guys and they love Jesus and love they the church love the church yep. and they're willing to serve yep. so many different people and they do serve so many different people for sure every day. Um, but uh, but th- those guys kind of enlightened me a little bit as far as my my the way people perceive or the way people could perceive me and what they were doing was challenging me because mm-hmm. they 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 saw something in me that I didn't see in myself and they pushed me to, what, to what take another step. What, what they, they, tell you? they said they said Sam, you look like an amateur when you're staring at the chord charts and the lyrics okay. on a stand the entire time and okay. you're not engaging with with the congregation okay, okay. and uh what what they were saying was not it's bad to have chord charts on the stage mm-hmm. or it's bad to have music stands cuz people are wired different sure some people are paid some people are volunteering their time and effort not, that's not the conversation, not the conversation. Sure. what the conversation was was Sam you have potential to be to raise the standard goes back to what we were saying we're gonna hey let's let's push that bar of excellence we're gonna push you yeah and they pushed the mess out of me for years (laughs) yeah and uh still do um today and uh what what they what they said to me stuck with me because um we got into it in a in a deeper way you can say is more of a philosophical conversation from that point forward because Uh it was like how we lead worship matters sure and so uh that that conversation has driven me to um that i had with them back in early early college days probably i think probably freshman or sophomore year in college 2018 2019 sometime in that time period they they drove me to think about the preparation process yeah yeah. and how 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 decisions that I make before leading worship in a live setting impact the live setting. Mm-hmm. And so it was just, a, good. I think that's just 
Um, I think that's just been something that I've tried to to work towards, and I, I don't ever have I don't always have every single lyric memorized sure, or, sure. or every chord memorized. Sometimes I just pull it out of my back pocket in the moment. <laughs> sometimes, uh, yeah, you, um, but but that, that 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 also in and of itself is a result of preparation. Sure. Um, putting in time and, and having the preparation tools. on the front end frees you up to be a little more spontaneous and and free in the moment. Jonathan uh, David Helser, Melissa Helser, uh, they lead worship and they have like a nonprofit ministry called Cajal Spurs and they've put out music and stuff for Cajal Spurs, but they've also been a long time worship leaders um, and served many different churches throughout the years. They said uh, in a podcast one time that the most powerful um, spontaneous moments happen as a result of the most preparation. Yeah, yeah. And so if you want to, to get to, and this is a choice that I made is, is if I want to get to a place where I can lead in a spontaneous way by the the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the moment, then I've got to prepare enough to have the tools ready. That's good to be That's used good. in that moment. Can I can I make a little application there for yeah. people listening today? For it. So sure. you know, I think so. One of the, the the biggest challenges for for all of us in life is how do we let our faith translate to the day to day moments of life yeah. to where you know when an obstacle pops up on a Tuesday afternoon at work mm-hmm. or you know our kids stress us out or there's some relational tension that we didn't see coming or the diagnosis comes back and it's not what we expected like how do we make sure that we're prepared for those moments well it's it's you you anchor your life in the daily rhythms in what Jesus has done mm-hmm. you know so it's those it's those private moments in in the scriptures it's those private Private moments with God and prayer. It's those, you know, the quiet moments when you're driving down the road and you let your heart, you know, drift towards God rather than, you know, the weight of the world or the worries and concerns that are that are so quick to, to overwhelm us. Yeah. It's those private moments of preparation that allow our faith to come out when we're squeezed by mm. life. That's so good. You dude. know, and I think that's 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 applicable whether you work in a church setting or whether you're you know whatever whatever field of career or stage of life you find yourself in that we can't discount the quiet moments hmm. that nobody sees that nobody celebrates because that's where the strength is forged for those moments when you know that everybody's when everybody's watching yeah you know, the, the the ability to stand strong in those moments hmm. comes from the strength that's found in those private moments. That's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm kind of trying to apply that and think through that in my own life. And I'm, I just was reminded of, you remember the song, dear friend that I wrote? Yeah. Um, and I released it for a little while and I'm taking it down. Uh, but there were a, a handful of people that were very grateful for that song. Mm. Um, I'm thinking about the the writing process of that song. Uh, I wrote it in drop D on an acoustic, which blown away is in drop D mm-hmm. on an electric mm-hmm. with like this super cool tone stuff mm-hmm. that and you can dial in like like they did or do your own thing with whatever you want to do. But um, a lot of the vocabulary, musical vocabulary on a guitar, mm-hmm. not real vocabulary words, but like guitar yeah. movements yeah, yeah. in drop D, um, blown away. Uh, coincidentally had a lot of the same vocabulary that I I wrote the song okay. Dear okay. Friend with. And so like I was hearing when I when I listened to the the song Blown Away and trying to map out the spontaneous arrangement that Matt Crocker did and, and then kind of do my own thing with it. Mm. Um what made it I guess to answer your question in a more like direct way, what made it legitimately easier for me to to learn it was I already had the vocabulary for the guitar playing in my hands yeah, from yeah. trying to steward something in private yeah, a, song three, a long time ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was longer than that. Longer than that ago. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But that's kind of a neat little yeah. tie that you just kind yeah. of brought to light. Thanks. Cool. For, hey. It's interesting. Well, hey, to, to, to wrap up today, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to actually read the lyrics from blown away. Sure. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, go I think that's a great, a great, that, that, to me, that that is the Easter story, right? You know, it's mm-hmm. it's the fact that the, through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we find life. And can, our, our hope is 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 rebirth from the ashes of destruction, and that's the prayer for my life and your life and all of our lives that that God can bring beauty from what looks dead. And let and let me uh, 
amen to all that. Right, amen. Right. I, I do want to say uh, Easter Sunday behind the scenes as well. There were a lot of other people that put a bunch of work Absolutely. in to make yeah, totally. Easter Sunday happen. Don't have downtown um, upper and also room. A, upper room, also at Adventure. Pinewood. We brought had a, a choir. We had a choir out of Pinewood. <laughs> they they put a lot of work in. We decided um, we. I was kind of wrestling with whether or not we should go with the choir. Mm -hmm. um, a great call. With, with, with all the new changes, with new services and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and people were asking me about it. And I was like, look, I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be – it'll feel kind of rushed and last minute, but mm -hmm. if y'all are down. And, and what has been – what's cool behind the scenes um, is that the choir for Easter – really modeled what a lot of people have modeled up to this point at Pinewood and also downtown with the new service down there is just a willingness to say yes to something that they're being led to yeah. do. And yeah. uh, it was cool. So there were so many th things that, uh, you know, blown away. Yeah, it was a great moment. I think God used it. There were so many other great moments, too, that a lot of people put a lot of time into yeah, it's that, that we need to acknowledge powerful as well. Man. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, here's blown away. And I'm going I'm to read the lyrics of this. I'm going to tell a quick story and okay. then we'll, we'll wrap it up for today. Troubled Messiah, you prayed through the night, unbearable sorrow, the world on your mind, betrayed by the kiss of a friend, you were taken by your own free will, rejected and disowned by those you came to heal, stripped of your clothes, you were mocked, you were beaten, made a king of fools. A crown of sorrow driven deep into your brow, yet you made no sound. Mm -hmm. What you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away is you love me as I am. And then here's the next verse. They called for Barabbas, a king for a thief, parading your kindness like rags to the streets, draped with the weight of the world on your shoulders as you climbed that hill, a burden far too great for flesh and bone to bear. You stretched out your arms as you welcomed those Roman nails, your body frail, the very hands that shaped the world hung up to bleed. Lifted on high, crucified him who knew no sin, the Nazarene, the Son of Man, the Lamb of God, Emmanuel, given to die. And then again, what you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away is you love me as I am. And then it jumps up a, an octave here. Yeah. Precious Redeemer, Lamb that was slain, hope for the hopeless, lifter of shame, friend to the sinner, grace to my soul, death is defeated, now my sin is gone, and I'm blown away. Yeah, I'm blown away. Crushed by the weight of the world that you came to save, you took my place. Your blood as rivers flowing freely to the ground, yielding your spirit, you let out a holy cry as you gave your life. Oh, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Mm. And then again, what you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away is you do it all again. Man, that's the... Uh, that's it. That's the gospel. And I love that, that, that through that story of what Jesus went through, we find the opportunity for forgiveness in life. And, um, you know, I think there's a, a, a bigger conversation at play in the world today. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, what is our hope? What is our life? What is our purpose and our meaning? And where do we turn when life gets dark and hard? And, um, John Tyson stole, told a story uh, at, at Speak, yeah. the conference I went to this past week, about, uh, about Vincent Van Gogh. Um, and Van Gogh was an artist, but mm -hmm. before Van Gogh was an artist, he actually wanted to, to be essentially a pastor, and he was rejected by the church he grew up in and um, just had a, a lot of uh, bad experiences with the church. Okay. So um, one, of, one of Van Gogh's most famous paintings is Starry Night. You know, yeah. are you familiar with, yeah. with Starry Night? Okay, Fair. so you've got, the, you know, you've got the sky and the, and the, the stars and the... You know, the it looks like the moon and the sun. It's hard to tell which is which. Mm -hmm. And um, if you if you look at the the landscape there, in Starry Night, there's a bunch of houses and the lights are on in the houses. Yeah. In the middle of all these houses is the church, right? And 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 for Van Gogh, like that's symbolic. Like the church was supposed to be the center of his world and 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 what he wanted to build his life around. But mm. there's no light in the church. And the houses are lit up, the sky's lit up, but the church is dark. Mm. And, you know, and I think to tie it all together, the, the lyrics of Blown Away and the message of Easter, that's the light of the church. And as long as we hold tight to the life, death, burial, resurrection mm. of Jesus, the light of the church will shine brightly Amen, in dude. the dark world. So it's good. Keep the light burning. Let it burn, baby. Let it burn. Let it burn, Let it burn like that blue flame. Hey, have Integrity first. Day. 
service before self excellence and all you do. Have a great blue flame. Hit them with it. Go be the light. See ya.